This is Dave Meltzer live at the greatest stadium on earth. That's SoFi Stadium here in Inglewood, California. Over five and a half billion dollars. And speaking about five and a half billion dollars, this guy's on his way, well on his way of making his own five point five billion dollars. And the oldest profession on earth. Oh, don't get scared. It's sales. Michael O'Donnell. He's here, CEO of MOD Sales Academy. He's also the vice president of sales and partner at Sun Solar Solutions. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an incredible conversation. Welcome to the playbook, Michael. David, so good to be with you. So good to see you again. It's great uh, that we keep getting together in these awesome venues. And uh, wow, this one just spectacular. Yeah, especially when we're preparing for a concert, not a football game. I got the <laughs> biggest waiting room in the world. I think 66,000 people are waiting for us. We just can't see them all. But Michael, you know, the oldest profession in the world, you know, people will say are other professions, but I will tell you it's sales. Yeah. And well, I would say the one they refer to as the oldest was a sales position anyway. That, there you go. There you yeah. go. And I just didn't want to use the word position. <laughs> We're talking about the other uh, oldest sales profession. job, <laughs> oldest profession. Um, and speaking of which, yeah. you know, sales is a profession. It is. And when I first started sales, only because I'm what they call an eagle, there's certain people that are born just like in sports with a high basement with skills, knowledge, and desire to sell. Yeah. Um, and those to me are the most dangerous salespeople because it comes so easy mm-hmm. to them that they forget it's a profession. Mm-hmm. And just like LeBron James, who's born with a high basement when it comes to skills, mass knowledge, yes. yeah, but he also puts the work in. Yeah. What I like about you and your books and your classes and your speeches and all the different content that you give, you really stray away from just having that natural sales ability. You get down to the nitty gritty and we talk about how many doors you have to knock on yeah, even do the uh, numbers. H- how much is it just about the math? Well, you can have tremendous gifts and be a complete failure, right? So if uh, just because you happen to have the gift and I find the most gifted find that they do think things should come easy. I have the hardest time getting them to put the work in. It's the ones that know they have to show up every day, do the hard work. Somehow they end up at the top. And so one of my missions is really to, in my book, no matter what, is to create a recipe for people that want to work hard, that want to train hard to then have spectacular uh, results. But, you know, I also work with the guys that do have all the talent, that do want it to come easy uh, and, and, and are lazy and undisciplined. So how can you flip the switch from being lazy and undisciplined to being someone who's doing the things that you need to do every single solitary day, no matter what? And that's that everyday thing that creates a difference. And what in your life, uh, because you are an eagle, just like me, I'm mm-hmm. not bragging. I'm mm-hmm. just born with a great skill, mm-hmm. uh, a sales skill. Mm-hmm. But beyond the eagle blessing that we've been given, we have this journeyman mentality. Yeah. What in your life uh, illustrated or empowered you to be a journeyman to apply to the great skill set that you have? You know, I figured out really early in my life that if you wanted to do well in sales, you had to increase the number of uh, conversations that you had in a day. And, you know, when you're sitting there talking about how many people are going to come through the dealership floor, uh, you know, reach you out on uh, reach out to you in your office, whatever office that is, it's going to be a very limited number. The only way to make the amount of money that you want to make and have the achievement and the goals and the results you want to have is to decide how many people you're going to be in a conversation with every day. And the only way to do that is to go out there and get them. So. Uh, when I first started selling solar in the 80s, that was uh, you stood up a phone room and you're able to smile and dial. I've been a telemarketer since I was 12, right? Uh, and, and when you wanted to sell something, you just set up a phone room, set appointments in it. You can't do that anymore, right? And that's because, uh, you know, no one has a phone landline. You, they have cell phones. You can't call them. It's a different thing. So uh, <laughs> here I am like so many years later and find out, well, the only way to go do it is go back out and knock on doors, right? And to go out and uh, decide how many people that I'm going to be in a conversation And, you know, when I came out of my big telecom career uh, and and had all these great salesmen that I was associated with and said, Mike, you know, O'Donnell's making a million bucks a year. It's in this solar thing. It's in the next gen. I mean, like we were all in the telecom thing as the Internet was being built. Like that was the place to be. Right. Obviously, the place to be now, the next solution the planet needs solved is this. How do we stop screwing up the planet? How do we save the planet? How do we get 8 billion people enough energy a day without like digging stuff out of the ground, lighting it on fire? How do we do that? Well, obvious. Uh, it's green, it's renewable for especially us in the sunshine states like California, Arizona, all throughout the sunshine, uh, southern and west, it's it's solar. There's there's no question that it's solar. And these guys would call me up, O'Donnell, you're doing the next thing, you're doing solar. Uh, that's Man, that's got to be where the money is. Like, man, the money is here. Uh, how do we get into it? 
you're in. Come on over. How do we get our leads? How do we get our appointments? Oh, we just knock on doors. Ding. <laughs> right. Like, hello? hello? Crickets. Hello? We're not crickets. <laughs> We're knocking on doors. So, you know, I think people uh, naturally have this aversion to say, if I'm going to be out knocking on, you know, a door, that's going to be tantamount to holding like a will work for food right. sign. And it's like, I'm not doing that, man. I'm just absolutely not doing it. Plus, the emotional resistance to doing it is, uh, it's like nothing else I've ever experienced for myself, you know? So you have to find a way to literally start over and build momentum every day. The momentum, uh, the energy to do it dies every day. And so you have to get that momentum going every single solitary day or psh, you're off in the weeds and you're done. And I'm going to go two different places. I'm yeah. going to first start in a nuance. That's interesting. Everybody knows in sales, that 80% of the sales is done by 20% of the sales force. Man, does that play out? And it always plays out. You and I are numbers people, which is why we like yeah. solar, which will be the second question. Right. Because, you know, solid numbers back solar. It yeah. Make, it is really <laughs> transparent in yeah. the numbers if you mm -hmm. can articulate it well. But let me get to something, a nuance that applied to me. Mm -hmm. um, if we're focusing in on that 20% mm -hmm. that give the 80% of production, mm -hmm. and if we're smart, we are. Mm -hmm. Um there's a lot of natural salespeople that have discipline, but they don't think they need to practice sales or get, they don't think they need to practice. Right. They're, they're willing to knock on doors yeah. all day long. <laughs> they're great closers, yep. but they have no idea if they become a student or a professional at it, yep. how great they could be. Um, do you run into people? This is my story, right? I was the guy when solution selling came in and Bosworth mm -hmm. came in yep. 20 some years old. Yep. And I'm at the back of the room. The first time he get, does his seminar, I'm like, this guy's full of at, right? I can outsell Did him. Did you get the cassette tapes? Yeah. I could outsell him any days mm -hmm. in the week. Sure. And he literally took the attention and said, no, 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 you're a great salesperson. You're willing to do the work and you can close, mm -hmm. but I, I can teach you to be more efficient, effective, mm -hmm. and statistically successful mm -hmm. at being great. Are you interested, son? And I'm having that conversation every single day. And I got, I would say, pretty fortunate uh, in that I stumbled into a room where people knew how to sell solar in 1984. And it was sort of accidental. I said I was a telemarketer. I was almost 40 years ago, by the man, way. Man, it was a long time. I don't even like yeah. to add those things up. I'm, I'm, starting, to there was some, sun back then. I'm starting to hit some KPIs <laughs> I never like thought about. You know, like I don't want to hear those numbers. But uh, literally, these were 10 men. These were guys that knew how to knock on a door, get to the kitchen table, uh, make a presentation that lit the customer on fire. Uh, and then they knew one thing that most people don't know. They knew there wasn't going to be another meeting. <laughs> they knew there were no, no be backs. Uh, hey, do you want to paint your house for 500 bucks or put an aluminum siding on it for five grand? Getting someone excited, they needed to strike while the iron was hot. The product had the benefits, but if they didn't get the customer over the hill and doing it at the result of the meeting, it, it just never happened. So they taught that to me. That was in the 1980s. And so I understood that they took me the, the tactics, the craft of salesmanship, the the skill of closing, and that it isn't just a gift. You have to know how to do it. People ask me all the time, how in the world can you sell, you know, roughly $10 million a year worth of solar, two and a half million watts of solar? How can you do that? So, well, you can't unless you know how. And so I created the MOD Sales Academy where I literally took those skills plus the, you know, almost 40 years of of experience since and learning how to sell uh, two, 300 of these units a year, how to close the first time, almost every time. Uh, the course on closing is titled, I'm not coming back. And everybody who sits with a homeowner has it in their head that if the customer says, I just need a couple days to spend with this, sleep on it, then I'll be ready to do paperwork. They all think there's gonna be that second meeting. And in a lot of sales, mostly in B2B sales, there's a whole bunch of meetings. There's never that moment where you close the deal and got the, you know, signed the thing. It's more like you did this campaign and got a PO. But when you're working with a consumer, you're in a car dealership, uh, you're in a solar presentation, it really is going to happen now or probably not at all. And so the service, the real service is to know your craft, know exactly that if you're going to do what the customers asked you to do is that, to help them make a decision and to actually come over the top and Wee, the thrill is if you keep going, man, backing up and coming back, uh, that's more work. That's more work and it ends up in a zero result. And really that's what the service is. If you're going to be there and be of service and be a world-class craftsman uh, at this uh, skill of salesmanship and closing, you have to learn how to do it. I learned how to do it in the 80s. I perfected it over the last 40 years and today I'm teaching it to 
literally hundreds and hundreds of young people at a time. And I tell them, you know, it's easy if you know how to do it. And so I invite them into the kitchen, making chicken soup, man. <laughs> how do you make chicken soup? My book is called The Recipe uh, for a Seven Figure Income. If your grandma knew how to make chicken soup and you did it, and she handed you the recipe, you'd be kind of part of the way there. But if she invited you over and you came into the kitchen, she showed you how to make, we were talking about mothers, Jewish yeah. mothers, Catholic mothers. <laughs> if she showed you how to make chicken soup, man, you'd own that for the rest of your life. And that's what I do. I have a recipe. I show people how to do it. When we're done having this training and this interaction, they know how to do it. And they're equipped to have a seven-figure income uh, in sales and, and specifically solar sales. And both of you, as we noted, both of you, us, I'm sorry, as we noted, have been around since Dennis Whaley, Zig Ziglar, Mike yeah. Bosworth. See you at the time. We, yeah, exactly. We've seen <laughs> I was in the audience. all the different content. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, you get what you want to get out of it, mm -hmm. but yet they all work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like recovery. Yeah. yeah. I always say all, all the programs work. They do. But you have to have the desire. Yeah. To, if you to, follow the recipe, it works. All the recipe. Follow the steps, right? Right. And, and in your book, yeah. uh, a lot of times it's, making the recipe clear, yeah. right? You know, some recipes when you're cooking, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, well, she can do it, but it doesn't really tell me exactly how much yeah. sugar. Yeah, that's but your recipe on an index card versus being with your grandma. She goes, no, this much. Right, Oh, exactly. I know how to do that now. So in your book, what are some of the subtle nuances comparatively? Because I know so many people that have utilized your book, your training, your academy, mm -hmm. and do make seven figures. They do. And they're not old men like you and I. No offense. Uh, I mean, these are. There's a few of us. But, yeah, yeah, but I mean, but that's kind of like some in. 21 year right. old yeah. who's making six figures and they swear by you. They want to knit you a cape and thank mm -hmm. you for the rest of your life because mm -hmm. they're in tears telling me, well, Michael changed my life. Mm -hmm. Have you read his book? Have you gone to the MOD Academy? Mm -hmm. um, what are the subtleties that you teach? Because there are differentiators in sales and some people mm -hmm. are able not only to mentor, right. give instructions or recipe, not yeah. only teach, explain the recipe to its full capacity, but you somehow have captured the third essence, which is bringing the best out of them as yeah. well. Yeah. So there's, it's a combination of one being able to overcome objections, right? And, and to understand the recipe for that. What's the formula for overcoming an objection? And the first thing you have to do is be a good listener and you have to understand how they feel. In fact, explain have empathy with that. I call it feel, felt, found. I don't call it that. We've learned that. How many times have we learned it? Feel, felt, found, but then tell a story with an expert in it. So I know how you feel. In fact, somebody I really care deeply about and respect felt the same way. Let me tell you what they found out after speaking to this expert, this CPA, this real estate agent, this person who's an expert. And now I'm going to have that actually have the real estate agent explain the reason why when they sell their house, the home is going to be worth more. The home is going to sell more easily, not less easily. And that's not coming from me, the salesman, who probably will say anything. It's going to come from the expert. So tell a story with an expert. The second part of it is to not buy the one objection that the customer is going to bring to you. And I just referred to that a bit ago. The customer is going to come up with this objection that says, I love it. I want it. Mike, I'm going solar. You're, you're my guy. I'm going solar with you. Uh, but I just have to spend a couple days sleeping on this, checking out with this thing. That's an objection. You have to treat it like an objection and don't buy it. Don't buy that objection and have this singular thought at that moment when that customer says, can you email this to me? Which means this isn't the day. <laughs> can you email this to me? I'm going to embark on this project uh, to have this singular thought that now it's time to do your job. This is the reason you were invited to the meeting. This is is the reason you created you know, this proposal and you went through this training. Now is the time for you to perform your service, which is to help the customer understand that it's vital, that it's essential, that it's imperative that they get this process started so that all of the benefits will flow through to them as opposed to their idea that somehow procrastination is called for because they're afraid, because they think there's a better price, because whatever that is, and we can deal with that and we can treat that and we can provide them with all they need to get what they want while getting the process started. But if for one moment that salesman says, maybe there will be a second meeting and he buys that objection, it's over. He's done. The sale's not going to happen. The customer's not going to receive the value. And so the service isn't there. And one of the other nuances that I really focus in on, which you're an expert at as well, we were talking about the quantitative analysis, the math. Mm-hmm. And 
that doesn't come naturally. You have to practice research, be more interested than interesting. Yeah. And solar especially, which you are a master at, mm -hmm. billions of dollars in kilowatts of energy and saving the earth. And man, what's coming? But it's such a simple math sale. Yeah. Uh, I have a formula I always say that if you can articulate yeah. the quantitative value mm -hmm. to exceed what you're asking for, you can get to that one buy that you don't want to do. I mean, let's do it right now. Or can you see any reason you wouldn't want to move forward right now? I'm oh, giving you a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. And I'm only asking for 20. Yeah. And, and I, I haven't seen yeah. a, a massive movement like solar that has such an easy yeah. quantitative analysis. Why do so many salespeople have a difficult time articulating a quantitative value that they even may know inherently or quantum work? Because they absolutely miss the value. They don't even understand the value proposition. So that's a lot of what's going on when I'm training people that are in solar to understand and then articulate the value. They think the value is knock, knock, knock. Hey, would you like to go solar? It's cheaper. And maybe it's $38 a month cheaper than what they're doing. Is somebody going to go $50,000 into a purchase to save $38? That's not, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. So what truly is the value? And that's really what has to be understood. And in the moment that we're in, the value is so compelling, it's really hard to get your mind around it. The primary issue, if articulated correctly, and if it is, the customer should be pretty disturbed because what's going on is very, very disturbing. We do have 8 billion people uh, burning stuff that we brought up from underground lighting and on fire for transportation, energy, everything we do in our home. And, and within the last year, the government has decided that is absolutely over. So the current administration uh, got into the Paris Climate Accord the day of this current administration. They promised us a Green New Deal. They ran on a Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is here, started with massive funding for incentives. There was supposed to be $400 billion in this brand new bill called the Inflation Reduction Act. That's to give homeowners between $10,000 and $30,000 to go solar. Like, I mean, really, they get the money. So like, really, that's too good to be true. Uh, and then the second part of it is uh, they are getting the money for all of that funding by taxing fossil fuels. That's how the government does stuff. We're going to put one engine full forward and one engine full reversed to get this battleship to spin. And it's spinning right now. And the real heavy duty numbers just landed. By the way, it looks like they've CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, just rescored that bill. It was passed in August. They said, Oh, about $400 billion in spending for homeowners and businesses for anything they spend on going green. But the bill doesn't say four hundred; It says 30% of whatever they spend. They just rescored it. It looks like $1.2 trillion in spending over the next 10 years. How much of that are you going to get? But here's the bad news. If you don't get your piece of it, then you're going to be buying lots of kilowatt hours. You're going to be buying lots of fossil fuels. You'll actually be the one funding the 1.2. It's literally uh, a triple threat. So uh, go green or else. <laughs> That's the title of a brand new book that I've just started recently. Go green or else the triple threat of the Green New Deal. Uh, the inflation impacting what you're spending on fossil fuels added to the funding of the Green New Deal, more likely the taxes, more important, the taxes of the Green New Deal. But what landed this week is so mind shattering, so mind blowing. I'm still just reeling uh, that, and no one really understands it. I'm a, I'm a policy want guy. I know you're you're probably watching, uh, you know, all the, you're watching ESPN, all the sports guys. I'm the guy on Sunday morning that watches uh, Face the Nation meet nice. us. And <laughs> this week on Face the Nation, the Obama administration rolled out 700 pages in new regulations from that scary agency called the EPA that said all fossil fuel power plants will reduce their emissions by 90% by the end of this decade in the next seven years. That's, that's such a stunning thing that no one can even wrap their mind around it. There's almost no way to do it. The cost, the magnitude of it will just blow away what we spend currently for fossil fuels. And what that means to a homeowner or a business, go green or else. If they don't seize on this and take the money, what they're spending for fossil fuels is going to just literally bowl them over. It'll literally knock them down. They we're not going to be able to get the energy we get now at anything close to the same price we're paying it. And uh, man, and this is not a proposal. This isn't a law. They announced that it's enacted. The EPA said, that's the deal. Power plant, 90% reduction in seven years. It's un un unbelievable, mind-blowing. When I talked to Michael O'Donnell, the expert, not just at sales, but specifically too in solar, I think to myself of one of the older lessons that I've learned and no one that I've met in this space is better at it. And it's 
people buy on emotion for logical reasons and you have to give equal weight, not only to the logical reasons, the articulation of the quantitative value to exceed what you're yeah. asking for, but the emotional aspect is equal important to make sure you're not buying what they're selling, yeah. as well as being able to tell a story mm -hmm. uh, that has credibility mm -hmm. with those, this is what I found from who, but also the emotional impact with the proper reasons, impacts, mm -hmm. and capabilities in order to effectuate a statistically successful sale. Mm -hmm. He has the academy, he has the books. There's nowhere else you need to look. My friend, Michael O'Donnell is the D2D &D expert. If you wanna make some money, help some people and have some fun, I'm talking seven figures of money. Michael O'Donnell is your man. Thank you for joining me at the greatest stadium on earth here on The Playbook.